okay. Okay. Good evening, friends. For uh, this lecture on composite building, design, detailing, and construction. Was fine. Rana, can you mute everybody? Ah, uh, one minute. I'll I'll do that. My wife needs to be a two hour one hour. Yeah, three and a half weeks. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Sudhir. I think all are muted now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, friends. Welcome for the eighth lecture of the structural engineering series that has been uh, conducted by the Association of Consulting Civil Engineers, India, and uh, it is being organized by ACCI Institute Working Group. Uh, friends, today's presentation will be on composite building design detailing and construction. The speaker will be covering about what composite constructions are, materials used for such constructions, how a composite section works, and how various activities will be carried out simultaneously. Types of composite beams and columns, typical solutions of composite frameworks for various fan zones with or without any restrictions will also be discussed. We will also be exposed to advantages and disadvantages of composite construction. The speaker will also display certain examples of composite construction. Friends, it is my privilege to introduce today's speaker, engineer Suresh Rao. Having graduated from REC Suratkal, he has had an overall professional experience of 38 years. He has worked in many areas of civil and structural engineering. Analysis and design of RCC structures, steel structures, composite steel structures, precast structures, pre-stress structures, bridges, flyovers, commercial and residential buildings, and uh, special structures like uh, sports complex, 100,000 capacity outdoor stadium, natural draft cooling tower, oil loading jetty, diaphragm walls, pre-stressed rock anchors. He has had various experiences in all these areas, and he has also had uh, a very good review or preparation of uh, fabrication drawings, rehabilitation of structures, pavement crust design and plant drainage, and also bidding for large infrastructure projects, national highway projects, airport and power plants. His areas of interest are value engineering and failure analysis and arriving at best feasible solutions for rehabilitation. Friends, engineer Suresh Rao has worked with prestigious organizations including Tata Consulting Engineers, Bangalore, Malaysian International Consulting Engineers, Kuala Lumpur, and GMR Infrastructure Private Limited. He has been working as an independent consultant for the last six years. Here I present engineer Suresh Rao. And uh, uh, Mr. Suresh Rao, I think uh, I will uh, make you the presenter and uh, you can start uh, uh, presenting your uh, presentation. I will uh, unmute you. Please unmute yourself, Mrs. Rishra. Yeah, yes, thanks. you can. You can go ahead with the presentation. Have you received the message? Yeah, correct. Go ahead.
Thank you, sir, for the introduction. Yes. Good evening, everybody. My topic for the today is composite construction. The composite construction is first gaining acceptance in non-residential building, the large scale in India due to its various benefits, which we'll be talking during the today's presentation. In my topic following thing I will be covering, which is already informed. Whatever questions, if somebody is having, we can discuss at the end of the session. What I will be covering is uh, what is composite structure? The composite structure, what are the material we are using and why? How does composite structure work? Various types of composite structure and overview of composite structure construction site activities, typical structural solution of, for various span zone, Typical structural solution for a given constraint, advantages of composite construction, disadvantages of composite construction, special consideration for composite construction, typical CFT column connection detail, few example of composite construction. We will not be dealing with the detail or the design aspects of composite construction in this presentation. Composite construction. When we say composite, there are various types of composite construction, which may be for our industry or other industry. But what we are talking about is our industry and particularly specific to building industry and to some extent to the bridges infrastructure. What is composite construction? A composite construction refers to two load carrying elements or structural members which are integrally connected so that they deflect together act as a single unit. It could be a flexure member, it could be a comp compression member. More often, we all think whenever we talk about uh, composite construction, we always think about a flexure member. But there is a composite column as well, which has a huge advantage in the present industry condition. Now, in any member, structural member, we always end up with uh, mainly two stresses, namely compression and tension. So, we all know concrete is very good in compression and steel is very good in tension. But we also know that steel is good in compression, tension, uh, compression as well, as long as a local buckling is addressed. So let us go ahead. How does this composite structure works? When we are talking about composite construction, we all know many buildings and bridges, it is common that we have a concrete slab resting over a steel beam. If steel beams are somehow connected to the concrete flange, then they both together act and it will behave as a single unit and thereby a composite action is achieved. If composite beams are, the composite beams are like a T-beam, whereas the compression flange will be the slab and the web will be a steel beam. In case of composite construction, the flange, which is concrete, takes the predominant compression, whereas the steel beam will take the entire tension in the structural system. In case of composite column, both Concrete and steel takes the compression. 
you know that as the building height is increased, there is some restriction with regard to construction of concrete columns because of the warm-up requirement, strength, because as we go, go for a higher, higher high-rise building, the strength of concrete will be required for the construction will be very high. And as we go up, the warm-up will be difficult. So that's why we are thinking of a composite construction. So in this case, particularly with regard to with regard to columns, compression number. So when we have a composite construction, we gain through concrete economy, durability, protections to steel uh, corrosion. And whereas the steel giving us the strength, ductility, and the speed of construction because it is done through the you know fabricated and assembled at site. Now we all know RCC, which is the brittleness is a problem. And in case of steel, the local buckling is a problem. If we can somehow address these two, then we would have a very good structural member. And industry has already identified this, which is nothing but CFT column. CFT is concrete filled steel tubes. What is the advantage in this? As we just now thought about, the steel has a problem with regard to local buckling failure. In case of CFT column, the local buckling is delayed due to the restraint given by the concrete infill. And the strength of concrete is increased by the confinement of the steel tube. Even in the design, in uh, whatever we are using in RCC construction, the permanent stresses are increased due to this confinement. So there is a lot of gain. You can have a very compact section. Over and above, the structural steel, which is a tube, will form the form of for the construction of the column. Strength deterioration of the concrete is now very less because the, the concrete is covered by a steel tube outside. And also spalling of concrete is not possible because of the steel tube surrounding it. You have a very efficient construction because there is no farmer is needed, no labor force for the farmer. And in case of CFT column, it is there is no rebar in the column. So the no reinforcement stage, no fabrication of this, lowering, assembling, all these activities are gone. So the total activity is reduced to only assembling the columns. CFT column and then pouring the concrete. And normally, this concrete will be of very high grade. As of now in India, it is a, what I know is a, up to M80, M100 being used. But in other countries, much higher grades are being also used. Concrete column, the CFT column, as per the experiment also, it is seen that the fire resistance is very good. So as a result, we end up with fire material less usage at site. Apart from that, the entire activity is now prefabricated. And as, a, as we just now discussed, is only the pouring of the concrete, which is again through pumping and creamy concrete. So the whole site will be neat and the work can go very fast. Another thing is in the design, what we do in this, when we use CFT column, the steel tube itself should be able to take the loads and other forces, gravity loads as well as lateral forces, local lateral forces, for around six to eight floors, such that one can 
without completing of the, these columns, one can go ahead with the other levels of construction in various stages. That means few floors are already passed. Complete column is not the filling is not done, but column I, I can pass the few levels of floors. Few levels, other two act, other activity can go ahead, structural steel members are put. I can put the sheetings. I can put the maybe a rebar and at, at a higher level, just the maybe the beams are erected. So I can plan the construction and go ahead at a faster rate. So this is a very, very good advantage for the present condition where we need everything yesterday. What we are seeing is now how does composite section work? The picture here shows a non-composite action wherein a compression, you have got a concrete slab here and a steel beam. Under vertical load, since they, these two structural elements are not connected, the concrete and steel member both deflect. The bottom fiber of the slab try to elongate, whereas the top fiber of the steel member try to compress. So as a result, there is a slip. And the whole structural weight is taken back under this scheme. So we all know when there are two structural units acting differently, it won't be efficient. Whereas non-composite in composite action, you have a slab, concrete slab, and a steel beam, and they are connected with some means. And then vertical load is there. Again, the behavior happens in the same fashion. The bottom fiber tend to extend, the slab bottom fiber tend to extend, and the top of the steel beam tend to compress. So, but due to this structural connection, the slip does not occur, and there is a, a horizontal shear is there developed along this plate. So this is taken care of by this structural element, which is called shear connector, and thereby the the whole unit act as a one unit, deform together, transfer the stresses properly between the two and then act as a composite section. So this is what you are seeing. It is a slab here, a steel beam, and this units which are connected these two are called shear connectors. Is what we just now explained. Now, how does this composite action takes place? As we said that we have got a shear connectors. So, in various other cases, whatever we are having a composite structure, how does this action, the horizontal shear is transferred? So, we have got a composite slab. In this case, the deck sheet, which is taking the flexural tensile stress. And the composite action between the deck sheet and the concrete is through bond. And we have uh, some mechanical interlocking, that means you have some projection here, or frictional interlock by means of a shape, or end, end anchorages by means of a welding from shear studs, or end anchorage by deformation of the ribs. So overall, the force is transferred between the two, that is the steel member and the concrete. In case of composite beam, the steel beam, or which these structural elements are welded, which is shear connectors, 
more popularly known as shear studs. These are available with various diameter and length and of different grade. This is easy to connect because it can be done it with a machine. Easily welding can be done. It is not necessary that we need to use always this material. Then other material also can be used like a cut angle or a channel or any other structural member. As long as it can transfer the horizontal shear between concrete and steel. Now come to what is what happens to composite column, like the reinforced column. In case of reinforced column, the rebar and the concrete, the actual transfer mechanism is bond. Same thing it can happen here as well, but normally. Over and above this, we provide shear stud. Now this, there is a reason why we provide, there is a reason because in case of CFT column, particularly, it has been tested experimentally and seen that during the fire, there is a loss of contact between the concrete tube and the concrete. Thereby, there is a transfer mechanism is lost. So as a result, the transfer mechanism is always achieved through some structural element, either in a form of shear studs or in a form of a ring welded to the steel tube. Composite column. So this is nothing but a CFT column, it's a tube. What we are seeing here some undulation is as cast. So you are having a minimum interlock interface. And this is a CFT column with minimum interface as cast section, but with shear studs. This is similarly in case of shear stud. What is being done is welded annular ring at intervals, and this ring will have an opening here for the concreting. The steel tube could be either in a circular fashion or it could be a rectangular or square. So, in case of rectangular or square, it could be again with minimal inter interface. As cast situation, what this tension indicates. This is the shear stud, this is annular ring. Now, what are the various types of composite structures? Composite slab. In case of composite slab, in the two steel beam, a deck sheet is placed. A deck sheet. We have a different configuration of depth sheet, different grade, and various tough configuration and spacing. So, based on these slab spanning, span length, loading, and fire rating required, as specified by the client, you can choose the deck sheet. So, the deck sheet can work as a permanent farmer. At the same time, it can take care of the tensile stresses at the bottom fiber. If you see the deck sheet, you know it has got a this configuration where I, the tensile zone where concrete is not required is totally eliminated. So, by this, what is advantage is. Depending on the configuration of this, you would be saving almost 25 to as high as 40 plus in case of a deep deck sheets. The concrete required for a slab. So suppose if your 150 thick slab is there, if I am using a particular configuration, I can the effective thickness can be as low as around 
105 mm. That means I have already saved around 27% of concrete. Moment I have saved the concrete, my steel requirement in the slab is reduced. Moment I have this, there is a dead load reduction in the due to this slab. So the supporting beams, that is my secondary beam, primary beam, can be sized accordingly because of the reduction in the loads. Further, there is a load reduction in the column as well and the foundation. So there is the overall a large benefit. In the concrete, uh, at the support location, we need some negative steam and for anti-crack or the thermal cracks, we provide a nominal steam, normally in the form of a mesh. Sometimes what happens, the whatever we have chosen this deck sheet will not be able to meet the priority as desired by the client. So in that case, what we do is we also design this steel. The steel should be able to take care of entire dead load and superimposed load and live load. And this is placed in this trough. This bar then we call it as fire bar. In present day, we have got a, a special uh, fibers, which when mixed with this concrete can take certain, up to certain level tensile stresses. So in uh, some developed country as of now, where the slab span is small, that is when I say small, around six to seven feet, You can, one can use the, the deck, one can choose the deck sheet such that the deck sheet can take the loading for the given span, as well as it can take care of the fire rating as desired by the client. And due to the, due to which one need not have to fire, to provide again firing bar. But then, because the slab span is small, the negative reinforcement requirement could be very little. That means the tensile stress developed in the process is very small. And anti-crack steel requirement is also very small. In that case, one can use the, these fibers at certain percentage based on the span and the loading and take care of the, all the tensile stresses at support as well as thermal cracks. So when I use this fiber, the strength up of this concrete and durability will be much more than our normal concrete. So in the process, what we have seen is now there is a total steel, whether we are talking about the fire bar or the negative steel or anti-crack mesh is totally eliminated. So at site, once the steel beams are erected, we need to erect a deck sheet and go ahead with the concrete. So this total rebar work is eliminated. This is supported by the Euro code as well as American code. But in both the codes, very clearly spelled out, wherever negative steel is required, it shall be not be depended on the fibers. We need to provide the regular steam for that. However, but uh, by experiment, it is seen that for small span, which is six to seven, and for buildings of office buildings of that nature, the fibers can take care of the tensile stresses. And uh, the percentage has been worked and being used and eliminating the total steel. This composite steel beam. This is a composite steel beam, wherein we have a, a steel beam 
on the top of the flange, we are welding the shear connector for the composite action. The shear connector will do the at the lateral forces, the horizontal forces develop at the interface to transfer to two mechanic, two elements so that it act together. This is the same thing what we are seeing is uh, steel beams welded with this shear studs for composite action. This is a deck sheet. This is the anti crack or negative steel rebar for the at support. Concrete is there. The whole thing can act as a composite slab and composite beam. This is steel beam with precast. Sometimes either architect or a client may insist that he don't want any steel element to be seen. He would like to have a neat finished concrete structure at the base. Soffit should be seen clean as well. So in that case, one can go with a precast slab steel beams over that shear struts are welded. These precast slabs are erected. This precast slab will have some slots where we can put a negative steel, which can take care of the negative bending moment and support. And this surface is normally kept very up and the anti Crack mesh will be put here, and there will be normally a small topping. The whole thing will, once completed, will act as a one unit composite slab and a composite. Whenever you use this Rika slab, depending on the slab span, it could be a simple slab. If the span is less, this could be thin section. But in case the span is large, we can go with the hollow core section wherein you have got a well defined openings such that the concrete quantity is reduced, economy is achieved, at the same time, the strength is more. Uh, sorry, the, at the same time, the, uh, the loading is reduced so that one can have the efficient design. This is castrated composite beam. This is as good as a simple composite construction, but only difference here is the beam is of castellated construction. A castellated construction for the same beam depth, we have got a higher stiffness in pressure. So I, one can span a larger span. Whereas other elements like Composite slab being the same, that is a deck sheet and slab concrete. This castellation will help to take the services in the building industry. So normally, before the, cast, the castellated beam is made through roll section. In case of the larger span, one can have a fabricated steel beam with circular openings so that one can span a larger span and the stress around the openings are normally there is no concentration or very less concentration of stresses around the opening. So these are particularly known as cellular composite beam because of its shape. And it is being used particularly for large span and also the, when the loads are uniform so that there is no sudden stress concentration around the opening. This is a, a new trend, but it is there, not, not enough, but it is almost few decades it is there other in other countries. 
This is called a slim flow or deep tech composite beam. Here, what happens is this is the steel beam, and for the entire depth, the deck sheet is having this trough or larger depth so that it can span a bigger span. So the deck sheet. The deep tech will be placed here and the side rebar or any rebar required in, inside the, the trough also will be placed because only the trough steel may not be able to take care of the entire structural steel requirement. The bottom steel also may be needed. So that will be provided, placed and completed. And at the top, we will have a shear stud. And the whole thing will act as a composite section. Normally, this is also called an integrated lab. In some case, in place of this deep tech, one can use a precast lab. As you see here, the you know the truck will be as deep as 220 or so. So Similarly, when I am using a precast lab, the depth of beam is depth of precast lab will be too large, too deep. So normally it will be with the hollow core slab, and depending on the span, it could be hollow core slab of normal reinforced concrete, or it could be even pre-tension. And at the top. We will be having a negative steel surface will be rough here, and the topping will be there with your shear stud. So the whole unit act as composite slab and a composite beam. This is whatever just now we discussed, steel floor only. The thing is for the explanation purpose, I'm writing as a type one. Very the steel beam could be of, uh, fabricated as per the designer's requirement. Here we have got a, a steel beam fabricated with uh, a T, T kind of section. With bottom, we have got a hollow RHS tubular section infilled with concrete and steel. And can have a different module, it can be a simple flange as well. Then you have got here a deep tech. You can see the now the you know, depth of uh, truck here. And in the steel beam, the web we can have openings as required to pass the services. So that is the advantage here. And could be depending on the loading, one can go with that. Whether we need to go for a fabricated beam or whether you can go for a normal load section. This is a, again a slim flow. This is our deep tech sheets with uh, bottom steel and top steel. These are the tubes for services. This is called. ASP beam. ASP is actually asymmetrical steel beam. These are the old section available in case of um, British as well as Japanese code. So that one can directly use the road section, need not go for any fabrication. And only thing is he need to one need to have some openings for services. This is it with the precast, partially precast line. Again, steel floor only, but with partially precast line. Wherein this slab, the bottom flange of this partially precast slab, will act as a permanent form at the same time acting as a having the rebar which can take care of the bending due to entire dead load, superimposed dead load, and the line load. 
during the during the operating. Here the steel beam is of UC. UC is the universal beam, universal column with the bottom flat. Earlier also here we, we can see this ASB that is asymmetrical composite section wherein this section is such a developed such a way we don't need last tensile type flange here so the flange is made thin whereas bottom flange which is taking the primary tension is made wider so here because of the precast the loading will be much heavier so the requirement there is a additional bending due to this load as well as there could be asymmetrical there could be a small torsion so what we are seeing is a uc section which has got a wide flange and bottom another flange plate is welded and this whole thing is at the top of this we will be providing shear studs and negative rebar will be provided to lock this and pass it as a one minute what you are seeing here is openings in case not a composite section and it, it is section is just uh, the concrete is up to the top of the plant only some case it is adopted like that it will be called as integrated stab only not as Opposite beam. In that case, this bar will be lapped here. The negative steel will be lapped in this at this level. This is normal composite bridge girder. Not much difference between the bedding and this. Only difference here is normally the loading in the Bridge industry will be very heavy and the spans are larger. So the beams will be normally fabricated beam and over this slab will be cast. Most of the time slab will be cast with the temporary form of which is removable or it could be sacrificial in slab or deck sheet. Both are not used as a structural member because of its capacity. And the entire slab will be is designed for its full strength required for the taking the entire dead load, superimposed dead load as well as slide load. In case sometimes we can even use a partially pre slab. Then in that case, the partial precast slab takes the will, uh, this partial precast will be as a uh, structural member for the during the operating time as well. We have got one more which I have not covered that is precast composite composite slab with. Steel in place of girder, it could be of truss so that it can span a larger span and uh, behave as a composite truss. This is a composite bridge box girder. What we are seeing is the top compression flange, and this is the bottom flange. Both are of high strength concrete with restress whereas these are which is the web member is embedded in the top flange and the bottom flange with a structural steel and in this particular case it is corrugated steel corrugated steel with just like our uh, is having a corrugation so that the lateral buckling is taken care. That means D by T, this will be more efficient than a, a thin plate. For given thickness, the D by T ratio for 
and the corrugated steel will be far better and thereby I can have a thinner section. This corrugated steel is nowadays being used even in the building industry. Even you can see if you go around even in Bangalore and Tumpur, we have seen that this corrugated steel is coming in the industry. Corrugated steel structures are presently covered under DIN code only, as per my knowledge. This is composite column. The top one is mainly CFT column, that is concrete filled tubes. The first one is could be a square or rectangular columns, and having a smooth curve. This one is steel tube with embedded steel member, complete steel tube itself. This is fully or partially concrete encased columns. Here we have got a steel member which is partially visible, whereas this is completely embedded. Here part is embedded and part is surfaces. So the same thing, but in a different way, that is a steel tube embedded, both concrete inside and outside, whereas this is a totally annular one, a totally CFT, whereas this is in, inside there is no concrete, whereas the outside we are having a concrete section. Similarly, in case of circular, these are not the only solution, one can have n number of combination to have a different solutions. This is an overview of uh, composite construction site activities. As I mentioned at the beginning, when I'm talking about the composite column, in case of CFT columns, one can design the hollow column, that is only a tube, to take care of few levels, of typically six to eight levels, so that one can cast without the concrete infill, I can have the few levels concrete cast, and few levels some other activity like racing up steel members, deck sheets, rebar, and steel beam deck sheets, and there could be only steel beams being erected. Because these are being done by different team. So one can take the advantage of the time available and plan such a way that all the activity can be simultaneously done. This has got a lot of advantage also, as I told. So normally, when I'm using the, the concreting a particular level, we will not be using the same concrete for the CFT columns because the strength of this column, the concrete grade will be much higher. And when I'm concreting the a particular level, the concrete requirement of this grade will be quite a large. So if if I'm trying to concrete as a, as a single level of a tube, then the concrete required for the tube will be very less. So I won't be able to use it efficiently. So as a result, I can have a steel pipe extended have two floor constructed or other activities going on and then come back and maybe concrete the three floors are so using a semi concrete so that I can use efficiently manage the time and complete the work. Composite construction, typical structural solution. Here what we are discussing about some typical solutions, but this need not be the only solution. There could be many, but normally adopted in the industry is being shown. But the slab zone of this may be a flat slab, may work. Flat slab, in fact, can work for a larger span as well. But anyhow, this is not the part of our discussions today. We are somewhere here where when this slab is five to span is five to eight meter, you can go with integrated beams. This is with our slim floor kind of thing, with the deep 
deep tech wherein the beams are spaced far apart in this in this range and composite slab can work for this span directly and you can have a beams for primary and secondary accordingly in this case integrated beam with a pre-pass slab this is with a deep deck sheet here i can go a little bit bigger i can go as well as up to nine meter with the pre-pass slab which is going to be a hollow core slab with the rebar uh, with the pre-tensioning if needed with a small uh, smaller zone one may go with the normal reinforced concrete in the span zone of 6 to 12 plus, one can go with the composite beam, the composite slab, normal deck sheet, and steel beam. And if the span is still bigger, in that case, one can choose either facilitated beam or cellular beam. And in a still larger span, one can go with composite truss. Typical structural scheme under various type of construction with or without any constraint. No rise, modest span, no restriction on depth of beam. One can go with a downstand beam with precast unit or normal deck sheet. Modest span, that means span is less than 9 meter, restricted construction. One can go with the slim floor with precast composite floor. Low rise, long span, that is in the range of around 15 meter, no restriction on the construction depth. You can go with the down strand into normal composite floor beam. It's same what we just now saw that when the span range is in this order, 5 to 9 meter, one can go with the composite integrated slab. For the smaller zone, 5 to 6 or so, or 5 to 7, one can go with the deep deck sheet. And we are in the higher zone, we can go with the or a hollow core slab with or without pre-stress. And this will be a steel composite section together with the composite slab. Whereas the other member connecting column to column would be a simple type. In this case, as a large span, in that large span, one we are having a secondary beam with the cellular construction. So that I can take the services through them. At the same time, I can span a larger span. Whereas a primary beam restricted to smaller beam or a smaller span so that it can take the load because the span is less. Either I can have a same depth of secondary beam or if the span is larger of secondary beam, my depth of the primary beam is restricted so that there is space for the services. The long span primary beam with the short secondary beam. Here the secondary beams are spaced along the shorter span so that beam depth are restricted. It's uh, made of composite uh, slab using a deck sheet. Beam is thinner so that services can still be taken care of. Whereas primary beam will be a non uh, a design fabricated section composite beam, but with the design opening. Normally when the concentrated loads are there, this concentration will be there. One need to design the opening for services because the depth of this beam, of the span will be large. There is no space for the services. So we need to have an opening in the web. So one has to design the opening for that. Medium and high rows, modest span, no restriction construction there, then one can go with the downstand beam composite construction. Medium and high rows, long span with restricted depth construction. In that case, we can go with the composite cellular long span 
steel beam. Whereas in other direction, primary beam direction span can be kept low because the cellular beam I can take the I can take the through the web opening the services and the space because they have restricted depth, I can take the services below that. This is a, just a, a picture of a cellular long span, aesthetically more pleasing, and all services can be neatly arranged. In this case, even the primary beam is made of cellular. Only thing this needs, it can be done, but it needs a special check around the data. Here, elongated opening, the fabricated beam, the elongated opening, this is mainly aesthetic or the service requirement may be demanding. What is the advantage of composite construction? There will be a lot of advantages in composite construction. Let's go one by one. Economic advantage. What is the cost will be done time? As we have seen in the previous slides, there is a reduction in the concrete quantity, the slab itself. So as a result, there is a reduction in the load, hence the rebar, hence the supporting steel beam section properties. There is a reduction in the load in the concrete column. So the concrete sizes also reduced. As a result, Overall, my foundation also reduced. So, so there is a series of cost benefits and gain. Second is suppose for a given span, I can have a particular depth of beam, but by composite action, I can reduce the depth of beam. So my floor to floor height is reduced. In the process, the facade cost will come down. Other ways. Because I have reduced the overall height of the structure, for a given height, I may be able to add few more floors. Thereby, I'm getting a sellable area, and then I'm getting having some cost benefit. Long span, because of the for a given depth, given gap, given depth of beam, because of the composite action, I can make it a long span. That means the, the spacing of columns are far apart. So there is a increased effective floor area. So there is increased floor area which could bring the cost benefit. Because of the entire thing is prefabricated and planning can be done to finish the work faster. So quick time of erection saving is cost due to early completion. Again, due to early completion, I can get a rental increment much earlier. So there is a cost benefit to that as well. Due to the overall cost reduction, my financing cost also comes down. So whatever we are going to pay EMI, that also reduces. So there is a Overall cost will fit. Architectural advantage. For a given depth, as I mentioned, one can have a greater span, slender columns, large e space. So one can neatly plan the interior. And since all the structures are prefabricated, well quality control and will have a nice finish. So architecturally a better pleasing appearance. Service flexibility. In building industry, we will have a lot of service to be taken. One can plan at the design stage itself before implementation. Within the false ceiling, all the openings where all it need to be provided, a web opening can be provided or a cocker box can be made and all the services are put inside so that and when needed it can be opened and and the openings in the structural steel beams are planned accordingly during the any modification or revamping of the system 
one can easily do it floor to floor or room to room just removing the false ceiling and those things can be corrected so this is can be corrected without uh, you know much disturbance to occupants this is a, a picture of service taken through the steel beam through the web opening in two perpendicular direction quality control set up composite construction since we are having a permanent form of in the form of a steel deck or we are going with the um, precast slab we are having a, a working platform working platform so that other future activities can be well controlled with regard to quantity and uh, the quality and in case of cft steel tube encasement the, the steel tube should be working as a form of so and the reinforcement proper steel sheeting these are all prefabricated so which are quality check can be done at shop and this need to be erected at site only and for as i mentioned for small span one can totally eliminate the reinforcement at the for the slab so thereby quality check is minimized so basically there is a one activity is totally gone so the quality check control will be minimum only here issue will be because of the entire thing is prefabricated i need to be very cautious with regard to placement joint detail and such thing so normally one may need a skilled with the quality control person there otherwise quality control advantage is more because of the entire thing is being fabricated done at site and at site have a good platform checking each and every joint like this you have got a nice platform one can easily move around without much worry functionality advantage Eye protection by using principle of reinforced concrete in which the concrete protects the steel where columns are embedded in the concrete. And by embedded in the concrete, we are protecting the steel for the corrosion as well. In case of uh, composite structure, due to the composite action, there is an enhanced stiffness, so bonding can be taken care of. Also, where this because the span is large sometimes, so there is a to control the deflection. One may go with the camber, and the later deflection that is due to the superimposed dead load and live load due to the enhanced stiffness, the deflection itself will be small. So the bonding issues are minimized. Disadvantage of composite construction. Unlike uh, in the other normal construction, here we are having an additional requirement of welding of shear stars. This cost of erection of shear stars will be an added um, uh, activity at site. And sometimes this could do some hindrance for the workman walking around on the top of the beam because of the projected shear stud over the beams. Then we need extra and special requirement of camber beams, which is generally need a special equipment and skill. Most of the composite beam, because of the reduced cross section to, to save the steam, the deflection due to the self weight and the initial green concrete will be large whereas the other deflection due to superimposed lead load and line load they we have a small deflection because the improved stiffness but to control the overall deflection one need to provide camber the camber is 
is a very skilled activity, needs a special equipment that is difficult to achieve. So this is uh, one big background uh, disadvantage and you need to be very careful when specifying. Since we have seen that entire activity of composite construction is mainly is precast, prefabricated, so it would have a very little allowance at site or while placing or while at the joint. So as a result, it generally needs a more skilled quality control person. What are the special attention needed for composite construction? So we have studied everything. There are advantages, disadvantages, okay, but there are some specific issues to be seen with regard to composite construction. Because uh, many a time we are now very much dependent on the system. System gives software gives some results and Normally, without thinking much, it has been put on the drawing. But one has to be very careful. That is, few of them are selection of deck sheet. The deck sheet should be able to satisfy both fire rating and loading and for a given span. In case it needs a fire bar, one needs to compute the requirement of fire bar and provide accordingly. Comply of shear studs. Normally, when we analyze based on the design requirement, one has chosen a certain diameter, length, thread, thread of concrete. The number of shear studs is arrived on the system. But how it need to be distributed along the length, one has to be very careful. Because a normal engineering practice. People follow the code which says what should be the minimum spacing, what should be the maximum spacing. But how is the distribution? One has to be careful because we need to see how is the any movement diagram and the shear force distribution along the line. Just to give an example, suppose if you are having a totally uniform load, by the time at the center we come, we should have all the shear studs from support to the center of the span. But suppose you are having a, a concentrated load at two-thirds span, at one-third span and two-thirds span, then you will see that the bending movement will be maximum, yeah, almost maximum bending movement will be at the one-third span. That means all the shear stud required are as computed a nova system should be there in the that one-third zone. In between the, the you know, you can have a, some nominal shear stress at a larger spacing and same thing at the last span, which any time we may ignore. Now specify for chamber for primary and secondary beam. As I mentioned earlier, the chamber requirement will become uh, essential in case of composite structure because of the sizing of the structural member. The deflection due to sulfate will be, and the concrete grain weight will be high. So as a result, chamber has to be there. So this chamber has got some disadvantage because this is not, every contractor cannot do it. It needs a special equipment and special skill. So before assigning the chamber, depending on the size of the project, I need to see whether chamber is okay or he can substitute in some other form, like change the section and see what is the cost coming up, interact with the contractor or the client and come up with a solution without the chamber. Or you may have some supports, temporary support for the construction stage so that this chamber issue can be totally taken away. This need to be done some study and arrive at whether we can totally eliminate. The 
chamber we cannot suggest for every section. We need to see how does the end section we have to take. Any time chamber is suggested, but the final detailer is somebody else. Nobody will look into it. Once you have got a solid end plate, it will not be allowed to rotate. Rather, the chamber cannot take place. The chamber which is provided will not be coming back to its desired level. So, one need to be careful with regard to end connection. We put the moment connection, preferably avoid chamber. And sometimes, even shear connection, people have a tendency to provide um, end, end plate with the bolt hole close to the well, which again get to give some kind of resistance for the rotation. Beam sits to the web opening. Where web openings are there, we must see that the loads are uniform distributed load. Our opening shall meet the specific requirement, size, location, spacing. If any additional check is needed, one need to make it before giving it. Case of CFT column, not for all column where there is a, an end plate or uh, some kind of moment connection plate is coming, one need to have air in the air vent for while concreting for the air interrupted air to interrupted air to escape. And in case of composite column, particularly CFT, a special attention is needed for the connection. Specifically with regard to moment connection. And with regard to shear connection, you need to have a locally a shear stud for transferring the load. So this covers the major aspect of composite construct, composite uh, construction. There are some specific require specific things like uh, CFT column typical connection. As again, this may not be the only solution. One can have a different kind of solutions. But generally, and uh, most uh, being used in the industry. This is a typical shear connector with a shear stack, bolted connection for either a steel tube or field tube in the form of a rectangle or square section. This is CFT column, the column connected to the external diaphragm, where the moment connection is there. The Bending is whatever tensile force is allowed to flow directly without having much local stresses at the in the CFT column. It's the same thing, but with internal diaphragm. And top uh, top and bottom plates are there, but there's an internal diaphragm which transferring the force from one end to other end. The internal diaphragm will be something like this. Which will be designed so that these two sections put together can take this the horizontal tension, top fiber tension, and this opening is enough for the, uh, the premi concreting. And these are the vent holes for the interrupted air to the concreting. The safety column bolted slice detail where the columns are of same section. A rectangular square section or a circular section. This is the CFT column splice. A change in column section is there, where the the bottom column is bigger and smaller, at the top is smaller. In case of a square, how does it look? What kind of connection we can have? A an inclined plate like that. It normally in one in six. Well, did it. Example of composite construction. That could be many, but I have covered only some three, which is again not in India, outside. This is Millennium Tower of Australia, constructed in Australia, uh, Austria, done way back in 99. And this is more relevant to whatever discussed, what we discussed about the composite construction in this um, 
presentation. What I meant here is we are having a concrete core which takes all the lateral load, wherein these are CFT columns, which we what we discussed, and these are integrated slab, stream floor slab. What is relevant in this particular discussion? This is having a 55 stories and 205 meter height constructed in required period of eight months. This is Bank of China Tower constructed 1985 to 1990. This is a complete structure, but slightly differently than what we discussed here. This composite here we have what actually the whole structure is standing on five columns. Four external columns and one central column in there. And composite action is these each columns are tied with the truss scheme so that lateral forces are taken care while local buckling of this also addressed uh, for the individual columns. And uh, has got just a four inch thick slab with the steel beam at the floor plate. This is a composite structure, but as I mentioned, it's a different concept, not what we discuss here. In composite uh, action by two structural members are connected with some media, act as a one system for this lateral load while doing the, the local buckling of the column as well. This is crowd tower in Australia. And sorry, this one is having a, a large area, even though it has just has five columns. It's having you know overall area of the 70 story building and overall area is 1,33,800 square meters. This is crowd tower of Australia. This is again slightly different than what we discussed with regard to composite action. It is again a composite structure, but not what we talked about in that format. It's a totally precast composite construction. That means both vertical member and the horizontal member. That means slab beam are made of reinforced concrete precast structure. And it is around 43 floors and 152 meter above ground the functioning as a footing. So the first one is what we discussed relevant to this particular today's topic. Other two are composite but with a different concept. Thereby I'm completing my topic over the day. Any question we can take. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Suresh Rao. Thank you, sir. That was a wonderful presentation that was made. And I see that uh, our participants are chatting in the chat box and expressing many of their uh, points. Uh, now I will uh, uh, click on unmute for members. Members can one by one uh, take on their questions and uh, uh, ask uh, Engineer Suresh Rao about your or doubts or any clarifications that are required. I think we can give chance to uh, Girish HR, who is uh, bombarded today's five session questions. with a lot of questions, about yes. five questions. So I think that answers most of the uh, participants' questions. I think, Girish, you are there? Yes, yes, I am there. Uh, yeah, 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 I think, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Mr. Suresh, or you want me to read what? your questions, uh, or you go what ahead with your questions, asking your questions. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Right. Suresh Rao, you can close your uh, screen now. The presentation. Mr. Ragnath, can I can I yeah. go ahead, please? Yeah, Girish, please. 
Go ahead with your question. Uh, and be quick. Sir, sir, sir. And brief. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the question number one is Does anti crack mesh entail design or is it decided based on experience? First question. The second question is Normally, uh, this I uh, is coming from my uh, first experience the entire tensile stress is taken by deck sheet so how do you calculate the requirement of additional rebars uh, can you can you hear me now can you hear yeah, me yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah so my first question was does anti crack mesh entail any design or it is based on intuition and experience the second one is the entire tensile stress is taken by the steel deck sheet so how do of additional rebars and the third one is normally we did not have keys earlier in the making sheet now the keys have come so except where it is entailed, we require uh, uh, the chair to be placed sorry i didn't get that clearly i i request uh, either mr rangnath or mr ajit sabnish to read out my questions that would be better Okay, I think uh, Suresh uh, Rangna, can I read or you? Want yeah, to sure, read? go ahead. No, go ahead then. Yeah, Suresh, uh, can you hear me now? This is Ajit yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. No, the, uh, I think I'll go by question by question. Uh, does anti crack mesh entail design or it is decided based on experience? That is the first question. Yeah. Does anti crack mesh Entail design or it is decided based on experience. Yeah. See, anti crack steel is normally for the thermal stresses only. These are normally based on the section depth. So, for the smaller span, it is normally not provided. Its requirement is not there. But a larger span to take care of some thermal thermal stresses, whatever guidelines are there in the code. As for that, it is provided. Okay. Next question. Okay. In, in, in continuation with that, the deck entire sheet. tensile stress is taken by deck sheet. Yeah. So how long, how do we calculate the requirement of additional rebars, which were shown in your composite slab image? Yeah. So the, the deck sheet, as I mentioned, if the deck sheet can take care, because deck sheet can be chosen such a way that it can take the it can take the loading and the span for the given span as well. So the stresses, the de whatever steel is there in the deck sheet form, if it can take care, that is fine. But at the same time, it should support the fire rating. In case if it is not so, able to achieve the fire rating, which is most of the case is the problem. In that case, deck sheet will be assumed as a you know, sacrificial steel. That means we will not be no more be considered. And whatever steel required to support the gravity, the dead load, superimposed load, and live load, the steel will be computed and provided. The entire steel will be computed and provided in the trust. And hence it is called even as a fire bar because the dead sheet is not able to take care of the, the fire rating. So the, there is a deficiency in the fire. So the entire steel will be provided as though it computed in normal engineering practice and same is provided. I hope it is clear. Yeah, when keys are already present in the deck sheet, why are shear connectors required? Is it because of adequate precaution? No, shear in the deck sheet, deck sheet shear connectors are not required. In case there is, you don't have a proper ribs or some kind of projection for developing the horizontal shear or the bond, only then the shear study is provided in the deck sheet. Otherwise, in the deck sheet, shear study is not required. But for the composite action of the steel beam, the, deck shear, the shear studs are required on the top line of the steel beam, not in the, shear, uh, not in the deck sheet. Okay, last question from uh, Girish. Are cellular beams and castellated beams one and same? Yeah, generally, uh, castellated beam is normally made of a roll section cut in a particular fashion to form it as a um, 
calculated beam whereas in case of a um, cellular beam it is normally a fabricated one but principally both are same both can be done even in the fabricated beam one can have a calculated beam but it is said calculated because you are taking a rolled section and cutting it in that fashion whereas in case of fabricated beam you can have a shape whatever you want either circular once if you are having a circular you call it as a um, cellular beam if you are having the same steel beam with the calculated shape we can still call it as a calculated beam principle of design remains same Thank you okay. very much, okay. Mr. Suresh ji and Ajit ji. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thanks, sir. Uh, Thank you, Suresh. Yeah. Thank I you. think uh, now I would like to call upon Aditi Kulkarni, who had uh, posed a couple of questions in the chat box. Aditi, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. Good evening. Thank you for the wonderful session. Uh, it was very informative. Uh, my first question is that if uh, people don't want to see their steel deck, uh, they, uh, how do they take care of it? I think Mr. Giris sir has already answered that. So I would like to know your opinion. In case somebody don't want to have a, you know, the earlier I mentioned that they don't want to see the steel from the ceiling level. So in that case, they normally we go with the precast slab. Wherein we can have a good uh, finish. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah, either it can be a precast slab or it could be a simple form ceiling. Or a demo form ceiling is there, but uh, if somebody don't want to see, you know, structural steel, and if there are no major uh, services. And services can be covered in a, you know, in kind of a copper box kind of thing. So if only so directly, if you have seen the structural steel places at the top, some 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 client or architect may not like. So in that case, where the functioning is not not there, one can go with a precast slab. Okay, so do we see these kind of slabs in residential now in India? No, normally, very less. The residential, we are using precast slab. But not a composite construction. Composite construction in the sense when I'm saying steel beam and these things are not used generally, but maybe one or two people may be using it. But uh, it is normally used for the non residential building like office buildings. And also, I forgot to mention it is not uh, this composite section is not that uh, uh, you know famous in case of uh, industrial structures. The reason we have uh, got a uh, lot of flexibility needed in case of industrial structures and the openings may come at any, any location. Loads are little large concentrated loads. So, and the floor plates are not uniform. Whereas in case of an um, office building, commercial area, the floor plates are uniform. So one can take the maximum advantage of precasting and the composite section. Okay, come in here, uh, uh, Mr. Rangnath. Can I come in if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah. Girish. Uh, yeah. One minute, one minute, Girish. I don't know the previous uh, person has yeah. finished her uh, question. Uh, sir, I have one more question. Uh, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Composite slab. Yeah, uh, one last question. Uh, sir, do we face any vibration issues because there is steel present and the concrete, the amount of concrete is less? And I'm assuming that vibration analysis is going to be done uh, in composite slabs. Yeah, normally composite uh, the slabs uh, vibration analysis will be done, and they they were the uh, it will be checked for the you know for the vibrations. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, the design requirement is there in the code itself, so the frequency will be. To see that. Can I ask a question, Madhav Kamath here? Uh, yeah, Mr. Madhav Kamath. Girish, you can ask later on. Mr. Madhav Kamath. Okay, no problem. I, I want to ask about the zinc coating thickness on uh, the profile decking. In coastal areas, what should be the minimum zinc coating thickness uh, in terms of grams per square meter for the profile decking sheets? 
can start it. Profile density uh, in the postal area thickness. Zinc coating. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe I may not be able to answer you directly. Depending on the condition, I may have to see because these are the available in the standard thickness. Uh, the CR, the, the DFT is there. But whether this satisfies the, the particular condition, one need to see. I may not be able to answer you immediately. See, from yeah. what I know, from yeah. from the literature that I have read, yeah. uh, the yeah, international yeah. standard is two, 275 GSM is the international standard. Yeah. Yeah. That suffice because some of the some manufacturers are also offering 120 GSM, which to me seems to be inadequate. Yeah, yeah, 120 definitely not adequate for the uh, your uh, Corrosive atmosphere. 275 is okay. As for me, my knowledge stands 275 should be okay. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Girish, can you quickly pose your question, please? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Engineer Suresh, sir, this is with respect to Ms. Aditi's uh, query uh, on use of this uh, composite structures. In fact, uh, our experience is that uh, this has got a huge potential in residential building segment, especially those buildings which are going ahead with expansion of a first, second, third floor, wherein the ground floor is existing and if the building is old. In fact, this solution is much more applicable. For example, the speed that we have calculated is within three months, we can complete one floor from up to the finish in case of a composite structure compared to seven months in case of conventional construction. So I think it yeah. has got a huge potential, but it is not a tab, both for yeah. entrepreneurs and end users. This has got a huge promise. Thank you, Mr. Ragnar. True, true. Okay, uh, true, because in case of composite structure, if, I, if where the span is more, I get more benefit compared to uh, where the span is less. So the residential, normally the span is smaller. So if one can, Make a you know CLP column oh, okay. and uh, make the span larger and try to kind of like yeah, uh, yeah. highlight uh, you know, the you know apartments. Maybe yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, 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 now, I call upon Mr. Satyam Reddy, who has a question. Yes, Mr. Satyam Reddy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please go ahead and ask a question. Yeah. Please. Mr. Reddy. Construction. Yes. Sir. Shall we go? Hello. Okay, this is Satyam Reddy. I think uh, I'll just uh, read your question what you have put in the chat box. Uh, Engineer Suresh Rao, is this construction suitable for earthquake resistant structures? Definitely. It is definitely suitable because we are going to have a, a separate system for the lateral load. System for the lateral load. So, which can take care of the lateral load with which will have either a core or a brace, steel brace structure. The CFT columns and other all round columns will take care of Thank you. And, uh, Mr. V. V. Murugan, would you like to ask your question, please? V. Murugan. Sir, sir, good evening, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sir, uh, good evening. Uh, yeah, today, sir. Sir, this is uh, uh, my question is uh, maximum how many how many floors uh, you can go ahead for completely the system of the structure in India. Whether we have done any of the legal structure in India, for example, yes. To very clear. No, his question is 
What is the maximum number of floors you can go ahead with this kind of construction? Composite construction, as many as you want. There is no restriction. Absolutely, there is no restriction. Maybe, 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 in India also, there are a lot of construction has taken place. Yeah. In, in uh, maybe if you can, uh, I may not be able to name it here, but a lot of constructions have been taken uh, in, the, in um, Hyderabad, Delhi, and I, I believe in Bangalore as well. It is there. Mumbai. There are a lot of structures are there. I have not taken the uh, particular snap photo to present for you, but it is there, already there. Many of them, we have been involved in the design review as well. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, I would like to just read out one uh, answer that has been given no. by Mr. Chudalayandi uh, in terms of what uh, Madhav Kamath had asked. He says, in coastal areas, 400 GSM zinc coating is required to assist the corrosion. He's just sharing his uh, experience and thoughts on that. It, it, oh, it, I have, I have a, I have a remark on that. See, there yeah, is a Madhav. book, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Suresh Rao might, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, might have read the book by uh, uh, Dowling of Imperial College. Yeah. See, the problem, the problem with zinc coating is, if you have too much of zinc coating, it affects the welding of the stud, shear stud. No. Anything more than 275 can affect the quality of the weld when, when the shear stud is welded because zinc uh, oxide uh, you know, uh, bubbles can get trapped in the, in the, in the weld. Yeah, you're, you're true, very true. That's why the, whatever we are available in the market, I think DFT is restricted to 275. 275 seems to be the upper limit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the upper limit being adopted. That's why I, 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 I mentioned that time when Mr. Kamath, I believe, when he asked for the coastal, I said, I'm not very clear at this stage whether there is a special requirement greater than 275. That's why I didn't want to answer that question. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? I think we have time for one last question. If there is any. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, who is this? Madhav, Madhav. Uh, it's Rangana, Madhav. Also. Yeah. During, during, the okay. a, during the construction of a during the construction of a composite beam as a as a floor, beam and uh, no. The steel beam alone may be in a lower slenderness limit, slenderness class than the composite beam, and may be susceptible to lateral buckling. Does this mean that section should be either plastic or compact? Yeah, it, it should be compact, minimum. Okay. One can design uh, it, but uh, it, 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 it needs to be a compact. Yeah, I think we have two more questions here. One by Mr. Raghunathan. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Surmishra. Uh, uh, this is not a technical question. So, India has been adapting concrete structures right from the beginning. is cheaper in India. Manufacturing of concrete is cheaper, was cheaper in India those days. And steel was not predominantly used in those days. But uh, after the, some period, the steel structure as well as concrete structures become almost equal. So, there was a wide use of steel structures. But in the current scenario, the steel prices have gone up substantially and again the concrete structures will become uh, cheaper compared to the steel structures so unless otherwise there is a need to go for a i mean that is like a long span structures do we need to consider steel for as a composite structure uh, some of the less important structures are for a reserve what is the advantage uh, uh, in case it will what will be the economy you foresee uh, in future so, as I mentioned earlier, where we have a long span and a repetitive and quite a bit of high-rise structures where 
the reputation and the time I can save a lot. Definitely, even the steel cost is going up because steel cost is not going uh, going up, but it is not the proportion is not that high. The overall cost benefit, if you are getting to the all cycles, like what I explained there earlier, by pre-planning the construction activity, what you are going to gain the time time and the overall the saving in the material, I think it will definitely is a better option. One yes, is a small, small span and uh, much uh, lesser importance. It may not be of uh, giving you that, that kind of uh, benefit. Yes, as you rightly said, for a high rise structures and for a long span structures where there is a, a need to go for a composite structures, it will be helpful. Thank you. Thank yes, you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Raghunathan. I think Deepak Shah has a question. Deepak? One small question, touch my ready, sir. Please go ahead. Can't hear you. Hello, sir. Okay. You're not audible, uh, Deepak. Hello, sir. Okay. I think uh, he's not audible. He's not muted also. Okay. Uh, any other question? Uh, yeah. Can I, can I come in? Can I come in? Can I come in? Madhav Kamat. Madhav Kamath. Okay, please, Madhav Kamath. This is the last uh, question. Mr. Mr. Suresh Rao, what has been your experience in the use of higher grade steel in the uh, for composite design? It's very, very good. Very, we can make it most economical. We are using higher grade steel in composite construction. But where the design is governed by deflections, uh, there is no particular advantage there, isn't it? It's true, but still we can take care by providing proper camber. It is feasible. We are using the higher grade steel as high as 450. And maybe if the, uh, the steel larger span are the where we need a more economy for the large um, and the number of stories are high, I think maybe still next level we may have to go. But India as of now, whatever I have come across is as 450. That is a yield strength of 250 MPA. The 250 MPA is, a, that is what I'm saying is 450 MPA. Ah. Being used. Such Thank you. Column, column as, as I as uh, M80 being used. In India. Elsewhere you can, it will be much higher. M150 in, and Japan and all it is uh, still higher. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, friends. That was a lively uh, question and answer session. And uh, I really appreciate uh, Engineer Suresh Rao for having taken up the questions and uh, answered them all to the satisfaction of all the members. And uh, I thank one and all for having attended today's uh, lecture uh, series. Uh, we'll all meet again next Saturday for the ninth lecture of this structural engineering series organized by association of consulting civil engineers india and in uh, association with accei institute working group thank you very much have a good weekend thank you sir thanks to everybody thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much uh, uh, very nice uh, lecture so please continue such lectures for the benefit of the civil engineers. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kumara. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you Suresh. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for the wonderful session. Thank you, sir. Very lively session. Thank you, sir. End the meeting. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.